Hello and welcome to the very first UK Zavio webinar. Uh, it's great to have you all with us. Thank you for joining us. Um, my name is Louis Wells and I'm hosting the session today. Uh, and today our webinar is looking at the advantages of digitalization for crop production and sharing with you how easy it is to digitalize your fields. Uh, it's the first of a number of digital webinars uh, we are hoping to run during the year. Uh, with future topics looking more in depth at some of the functionality we'll introduce to you today, um, as well as covering some more overarching uh, topics such as how digital can support sustainable agriculture. Um, we'll inform you about these future webinars and dates via email, um, and also it will be on our website, so do keep a lookout for those. Um, but before we get started today, uh, let me share some organisational information. To ensure everything runs smoothly, uh, you are all on mute. Um, therefore, I encourage you to write your questions and comments directly into the chat uh, so we can answer those later in the Q&A session. Um, the chat can easily be found to the right-hand side of the video panel, uh, which you're looking at now. Um, but if you're in full screen mode, you'll need to come out of that to, to be able to use the chat function. Um, also, just to share that the, the webinar will be recorded, so just to be aware of that. Um, but yeah, all, all should run smoothly, I'm sure. Um, today, our speaker is Luke Pollard, who is the Zavio Implementation Lead in the UK. Um, so I'll hand over to him to take us through the presentation. Thank you, Luke. Perfect. Thank you, Louis. And also from my side, a very warm welcome uh, to our first UK webinar about Zavia Field Manager. And before we begin, I want to briefly look at today's agenda. Uh, so first, I'm going to give an introduction to Zavia Field Manager, and then we'll have a look at the key features uh, within the system and look at them and look and see how they can benefit you on your farm. Uh, so then I'll jump across the live demo of Field Manager uh, to show you how you can set up your own accounts and how you can add your fields and your cropping yourself. And then I will show you how you can use the key features of Field Manager within the live demo. And finally, we move to the most important parts, which is the Q&A, where we should have plenty of time to answer your questions. So please do drop any questions that you do have into the chat as we go through. And, uh, and the webinar will take us around an hour. Uh, so let's, let's get started. <clears throat> so... Zavio Digital Farming is the digital arm of BASF and it has a presence globally with its different products and a strong and growing presence in Europe. The aim of Zavio Digital Farming is to develop digital farming solutions and tools uh, that can help growers and agronomists to improve and automate their crop production by providing agronomic insights for your crops and data driven crop models to assist with agronomic agronomic decision making on farm. But today we would like to mainly focus uh, with uh, on Zavia Field Manager, uh, which is one of the two products under the Zavia brand that is launched in the UK in the UK today, as well as Zavia Scouting. So Zavia Field Manager was launched in the UK at the start of 2020. And uh, Zavia Field Manager is a digital solution aimed at helping you to optimize your crop production uh, and your infield activities during the whole season from seeding, from seeding of your crop right the way through to harvest. And this is available on your web browser, on the computer, and as a mobile app. And both applications access the same data via the cloud. So you always have field manager updates and insights at hand when you need it, whether that's in the field or in your office. And throughout the spring, since launch, uh, we had 1,100 new growers joining us and using us our field manager. So field manager differs from other digital farming tools available in the market as, as it has features uh, that will help you from the seeding of your crop all the way through to harvest. Uh, so let's have a look at some of the features within Field Manager. So firstly, for each of your fields, you will receive live 
in-season biomass map imagery from satellite data. Also for each of your fields, you'll be able to access uh, current weather forecasts and historic weather data. You'll be able to document your tasks and applications for each of your fields and also add field notes to each of your fields, which you can pinpoint uh, with a photograph as well. You can upload your own field maps and analyze your field maps uh, within the system and also share access to your farm with other members of your team to help you better collaborate as a team. As you're looking to drilling your crop, uh, you, you may uh, you can use Zavio Field Manager to generate variable seeding maps uh, for your drill. So you can adjust uh, the seeding density in different areas of your field. And then when you're looking at uh, your fertilization activities, you can again create variable, variable application maps for your nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium applications. You'll also receive uh, timing alerts for the optimal timing of your fertilizer uh, activities. <clears throat> then as you move into the spring, when you're thinking about applying your crop protection, so your fungicide and PGR, you'll again receive uh, alerts for the optimal timing of these fungicide and PGR applications based on disease and growth stage tracking. So this is looking at the crop data modeling that sits within Zavia. And finally, with these crop protection applications, you can create variable maps based on the biomass imagery, uh, looking at the variability within your field. So let's have a look at a few of these key features in more detail. So firstly, for each field, Field Manager provides biomass maps from satellite imagery, helping you to get the best understanding of your crop development throughout the season and looking at the infield variability. So up to 100 biomass images will be, will be provided for each field per season. And also the biomass map data from previous seasons is used to provide a historical yield potential map. So as well as understanding your crop developments, these maps could help you find areas in the field that need further investigation, such as areas that are suffering from flooding where, where you could, uh, where there could be a damaged drain, for example, or areas of your crop that are establishing more slowly that might need additional attention going forward. You can also upload other types of maps here. So for example, you can upload maps from your tractor or combine, like a seeding or yield maps. You can then compare and analyze these maps with each other and bring in the live biomass maps from the season. You can then use this information to make agronomic decisions. And this gives you a good overview of the information available about your fields. So moving on, uh, looking at the zone spray functionality. And so zone spray ensures that you can use the optimal application dose or seeding density for every part of your field by utilizing variable application technology. So Field Manager analyzes the biomass map data that we've just seen and determines which areas of a field are growing more successfully and which areas are growing less successfully. So depending on this, the field is automatically split into different field zones and the number of field zones can vary between three and five, depending on your crop, the development of the crop and how high your yield expectations are. So now that field manager has separated your field into zones, you can then decide what application rates you want to apply in each field zone, of course, within the legal limits. So for example, for a fungicide application, you can apply a higher rate where your crop has more biomass and more green leaf area, uh, and more green leaf area. You can create these application maps for seeding, fertilization, and crop protection applications. So you can then upload these maps to your terminal uh, via USB or wirelessly with the My John Deere uh, data link. So this means that with zone spray, you can optimize your inputs, putting them exactly where they're needed. So to complement the zone spray functionality, Field Manager also provides alerts for the optimal timing of your spray applications. 
so this feature is called Spray Timer. And Spray Timer uses agronomic data modeling to provide this application timing alert. And these alerts are unique to your field and your situation. The information that drives the modeling behind the alerts is entered into Field Manager when you set up your field and crop. So meaning that the insights are specific to your fields and your situation. So when adding your crop, you'll enter information like uh, your field location, the crop type, uh, what the variety is. Cesavio, Cesavio understands the, uh, the variety, disease and pest susceptibility and how quick it is to mature. And importantly, you'll enter the drilling dates, which is crucial to kickstart the data modeling. So along with local weather data, this data is what Spray Timer uses to drive the crop modeling and provide the agronomic insights. Agronomic insights such as crop growth stage tracking and forecasting. So a current prediction of what the current growth stage is and a forecast of how the growth stage will develop of your crop. And also disease risk scores for cereals and pest risk scores for oilseed rape, which indicate when the crop is more likely to be susceptible to a disease or pest. So using these field specific insights, spray timer can provide alerts for the optimal application timing for crop protection and fertilizer. So as a user, Zavia Field Manager works with you, taking on board your observations you make during field walking, like the current growth stage of your crop and the current infield disease pressure. So once you enter these observations within the system, Field Manager will take them into consideration and they'll have an influence on the data modeling, allowing you to further tailor the agronomic insights to your field situation. So using both the spray timer feature and the zone spray feature means that your applications will be applied in the most sustainable and effective way, applying them at the optimal time and tailored to exactly where they're needed. So the last key feature that I want to discuss is the collaboration and team working that is possible by using Field Manager. So you have the option to share access to your farm with Field Manager uh, with members of your team. So for example, you can share access uh, with your agronomist or your spray contractor. So you choose who you want to share access with and how much of your field activities they can see and update themselves. So your agronomist could access your farm and field activities as if it was their own farm, if you gave them access rights to do this. You know, they could then see what's going on in your fields, such as the predicted growth stage, uh, such as the crop risk and the biomass development, helping them to prioritize which fields need their attention first. Additionally to farm sharing, uh, for someone like an agronomist who has responsibility for several farms, they can utilize the cross farm dashboard. The cross farm dashboard uh, shows an overview of all the farms someone has access to within Field Manager at the same time. And then filters can be used to see which fields have the highest risk of disease or pest and which fields have alerts for, up for upcoming applications. So in this way, the cross farm dashboard can be used to prioritize workload across farms. So up to this point, you've seen how Field Manager can support you with your field activities, but Field Manager can increase your profit as well. So since 2015, uh, field trials in Germany, France, the UK, Poland, Belgium and Ukraine have shown a positive margin of input cost of using spray timer and zone spray, both showing an average benefit of £30 per hectare. So this is how Field Manager optimises your crop production and supports your farm profitability. <clears throat> so this was a brief overview of the main features of Field Manager. Uh, but today I don't only want to tell you what Field Manager has to offer, uh, but I want to show you how to use Field Manager as well. And that is what I'm going to do now. So to do this, I'm going to leave this presentation and go across to my internet browser. <clears throat> so.
so the first thing that we're going to do is, is pull up the Zarvia website uh, by searching uh, zarvia.com. And now we can see the Zarvio homepage. And from here, you can either log into your Zarvio Field Manager accounts with this button in the top right hand corner, or you can find the, the Create Your Account button uh, just over here. So if we click on this, uh, we'll then pull up the registration page where you can create your Zarvio Field Manager accounts. You have to fill in a few details, such as your first name, such as your first, last, and your email address. Uh, so I'll enter that there. And we'll also, we'll also enter uh, your, your phone number as well. Uh, so once you've done that, you can press uh, continue. You'll then enter, have to set up a password. Uh, so make sure it's a strong password. And then you can, uh, you can you need to read and accept the terms and conditions, which can be found at this link here. So just tick the box once you've read them. And then you press uh, create Zarvio account. I've actually already created an account under this email address, so I'm just going to jump across that account now that I've already created, uh, which which looks like this. And once you've uh, created your account, you'll then be invited to uh, to add some fields to your farm. So there's three ways in which you can add your fields to your farm. You can you can use the the map, and you can select fields uh, from the map using predefined field boundaries on the map or you can draw your fields manually on the map. You can upload shape files as well and a shape file is a file that contains information about your field such as your field name or your field boundaries and you can get the, a shape file from, uh, from places like other uh, farm management systems. You can also bring in a uh, your field boundaries uh, using the My John Deere data link. So if you're a My John Deere user, you can import your fields using this link as well. But for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the, the, uh, the, the map function to add my fields. So I'm gonna click here. So then, uh, to, uh, so then to add your fields, you firstly search for your location of your farm by entering a postcode or a, or a town name. So that's what I'm going to do here. So then I come to the location of my farm and you can find your fields from above on the map. Uh, so then to add your fields to your farm, you just click on the fields to add them. So I'm gonna add two fields here. You can easily rename them uh, by clicking in this box. So I'm gonna to plan to add winter barley in this field. So I'm just gonna call the field winter barley. And in this field, I'm gonna to plan to add winter wheat. So again, I'm just gonna call this field winter wheat, but you can and call your fields whatever you like. And you can also then edit uh, the shape of your field really easily by clicking the edit shape button. So what we can do is we can simplify the shape of your field really easily by using this, uh, this, this bar at the bottom. And then we can correct the, uh, the shape of your field if it's, if it's not quite perfect. So now we've done this, uh, we, can, we can save uh, the new shape. And once you're happy with the fields that you've added and the name and the, the names that you've called them, you can click save. <clears throat> so, so now we can see I've got three fields in total on my farm, a field of orchard rape, which I added earlier on, and some fields where I'm gonna add winter barley and winter wheat. So to add a crop, you click on your field and you click the, the assign crop button at the bottom. So to assign a crop to a field, you firstly have to uh, choose which crop you want to add from a list of all of the available crops within Field Manager. So you can see that we're covering off the majority of the cropping uh, that you may have. In this example, I'm gonna choose winter wheat. So the first thing that you have to do is select the variety of the crop that you're adding and all of the registered varieties in the UK will be in this list, but you can search it as well. So I'm gonna search for Skyfall. And you can also change your seeding dates and the date that you drilled it and your yield expectation as well at this step. If I press continue, I can then choose what my previous crop was. The previous crop on this field was, was another winter wheat. So this is second wheat. So I'm going to leave that as a winter wheat. And you can also change the tillage system that you're using on this field. So this information that I've entered here is, is really important because this is the information that's used to drive the crop data modeling and provide them agronomic insights. So the more accurate the information is that you add here, the more valuable them insights will be to you. So I'll hit save crop. 
And what we can see now is in my field of winter wheat, I can see that I now have a crop added to this field. And straight away, I can start to see some of the, uh, the insights coming through that field manager has to offer. So straight away, I can see an overview of my, of my fields and my crops. I can see the variety of the crop and the seeding dates here, the size of my field. And I can also see already uh, the, the prediction of the current growth stage of that crop. If I, if I look further down the list, I can see that I've actually got a, a timing alert for fertilizer application uh, based on the growth stage of the crop. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and some weather information coming through already. Uh, you, can, you can access more weather information and more detailed historic weather data at the weather tab at the top up here. Uh, so now that we've set up some fields and some crops on this farm, I will now show you how you can use the key features in Field Manager. So I've spoken about the biomass maps, the zone, uh, the spray timer and the zone spray functionality. Uh, but how does this all come together? So the field status page, which is what we're on now, which is like a home page, provides the place where you can either see or access these features. So we're going to look at how the status page will look in the spring. So in a few months time. So to do this, I'm actually going to go on to a, a demo version of the platform, which shows you what it looked like in the spring, as obviously we're currently in January. Uh, so now I've moved across to the, uh, to the, to the demo version. I can show you uh, more of the agronomic insights. Uh, so firstly, we can see here uh, that we're currently in the spring. We're at the beginning of May. And we can see that we're starting uh, to see the, the risk likelihood for disease and pests on the field. And this is shown over here under the status details on the crop health in a traffic light system. So we can see the overall score for disease here is red, which is saying it's a high risk likelihood for disease. And we can also see which relevant diseases are driving this disease score, in which case, in this case, it's, it's septoria, as it's red, meaning it's high risk for septoria. And you can see there's currently low risk for ice spot and brown rust on this field as well. Also on this data page, we can see that the biomass maps are available. So we can we can look at the live in-season biomass map uh, from the satellite data, uh, and we can observe the, the variability uh, of, of biomass and green leaf uh, in the field, where areas are more dense and have grown away better compared to areas that are, are thinner, potentially because they're close to the headlands, or there's some, some drainage or or flooding, uh, flooding issues in, in parts of the field. And we can also swap and see the power zone map, which is the historic yield potential map. So this is using the historic biomass data to show you kind of uh, that yield potential of the field. And you can compare these maps to each other very easily on this uh, status page. <clears throat> so also on this status page, uh, you can see the growth stage tracking in more detail. So you can see the current, uh, you can see the current disease, uh, the current growth stage prediction, which is at growth stage 32. So just approaching T1. And you can see the, the forecast uh, for growth stage as well. <clears throat> From this page, you can also create observations of growth stage. Uh, so if I click on the modify growth stage button, if I've just walked my crop and I've, and I've observed that the crop is at a certain growth stage, I can then input this information here and Field Manager will take that information into consideration uh, and recalibrate the, the, crop growth, uh, the crop growth models. So what we can also do at this homepage is add additional tasks. So, I can see on this field that my crop is at growth stage 32, so approaching T1. I can also see that the disease risk likelihood is high. So what, I, what I'm thinking then is, I'm probably gonna wanna go and check my field, consult with my agronomist and decide whether it's time for that, uh, for that first application of fungicide. So, uh, so say I've, I've decided that I'm gonna make the application, I can then add this task within Zavia Field Manager. So I click the add task button down here and I can choose to add a crop protection application. But you can also add other tasks from this point as well. So from here, firstly, we, we select which day we're going to plan this application on. 
And you can do this by, by using the, uh, the spray weather indicator on this page as well. So green is indicating the weather is good at certain times of the day, and red is indicating that the weather is poor and you're not going to be able to spray. So firstly, select which day you're going to spray on when you're planning that application. And then you're going to build your tank mix. And you can do this by looking at the list, uh, by looking at the product list where all of the registered products in the UK sit. And in this example, I'm going to choose Revstar. And then you press next. At this point, then uh, you're then uh, setting the dose, uh, the dose rate of this of this product. Uh, and for a flat rate application, you, you enter your dosage. Uh, so in this case, I'm putting one litre per hectare for a flat rate. But from here as well, you can also toggle to create a variable rate application map, which we spoke about earlier on. So I can to toggle between flat and variable rates. So now you can see that Zario has split up my field into five different zones, where zone one has, uh, where zone one is picking out the areas of the field that has high spire mass and most green leaf, down to zone five, where my crop is the thinnest. So you can see here now that I can vary the dose of my fungicide across these zones. So in this case, a uh, uh, dose rate of 1.2 litres per hectare down to 0 0.8 litres per hectare. So then I click next. So on the final page, you can see an overview of the variable application map uh, for your field. And you can also see uh, the tank recipe as well. So you can see that Zarview is giving you an indication of how much water you need and how much of the product you need in order to cover that field. Zarview knows how big your field is. So then we'll click save. <clears throat> so that task is now planned within the system. And when you've actually made that application on your field, you can click that that task is complete. So what then happens is uh, Zarvio Field Manager will then take that application into consideration and it will show you the effects of that application on your crop health uh, with the traffic light system. So if we look at the disease, uh, the disease risk likelihood scores, we can see that the, the disease scores are now purple. And purple means that uh, your crop is then protected as a result of that application. And it'll also give you an indication of when that effect is reducing uh, as the, the colours will turn from purple to green, orange, and then red again, as it's coming up to time for your next application. <clears throat> so, so the last thing that I wanted to show you on this live demo was how you share your farms and you collaborate with, with other team members. So to do that, you enter your settings in the top right hand corner where your name will be. And then you can find an option where you can share your fields, uh, share, share your field, share access to your farm. So from here, you enter the email address of the registered user, field manager. So this may be your agronomist or spray contractor. You enter the email address and then you can choose whether you want to share the share access to the farm at just a, a viewer level. So just being able to view it, but not edit anything or actually be able to edit and update everything just like you can on your farm. So then once you've done that, and if you have access to more than one farm, you can then utilize the cross farm dashboard. And the cross farm dashboard can be found in the top left hand corner where you find a list of all the farms you've access to. You find the cross farm dashboard option and this that brings you to this page here. So like I said before, the cross farm dashboard is useful for managing uh, time and workload, especially if you have multiple farms in one account. And you can analyze which farms and fields need your attention first by applying a whole range of filters. So now if I return back to the home screen, uh, this brings us to the end of the live demo section of this webinar. So I'm now going to hand back to uh, Louis, who is going to uh, take, who's going to start the, uh, the question and answer session. Uh, thank you very much everyone for your time. Great, thank you very much Luke for an excellent presentation. Um, I particularly enjoyed the live demo um, and you know showcasing what you can see live within field manager today but also you know when you're in season how the modeling etc works so really great thank you um so now it's on to the most exciting part of of the the webinar which is the q a um thank you to those who've already posted in in the chat um and just to encourage you again as you know as 
as the conversation goes on, do feel free to to put questions in there and we'll look to get through as many different topics um, before the end of the webinar um, today. Um, so we also have a couple of pre-submitted pre, uh, questions um, and perhaps um, that'd be a nice place for us to start off. Um, so one question that's come in, Luke, um, is around some of the biomass imagery that we have within Zavio. Um, obviously here in the UK, it's, it can be pretty cloudy, it certainly has been the last couple of days. How do we deal with, um, with clouds when it comes to the biomass maps that we're looking to, to get into Field Manager? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Louis, and a great question. Yeah, you're definitely right in saying we get uh, quite a lot of cloud in the UK, and uh, even up in up in Manchester, we've had some snow even this week as well uh, last night. So, uh, so the the satellite imagery and the data uh, that the satellites are picking up uh, can be affected by cloud cover, but any imagery that is affected by cloud cover is excluded from the analysis that Zavi was doing to then generate them uh, the, the leaf area index biomass maps. Uh, and they won't be delivered as a biomass map, only maps uh, that have come from uh, a, a clean satellite image will be delivered. And uh, the way that we do this, and also to ensure that you get regular maps, uh, and we like uh, to think that you have a, a new map on, on your feature of your fields at least once a week. The way that we do this is that we use uh, two different satellite providers, uh, so Sentinel and Planet satellites. Uh, and that means uh, because we're using two providers, we're ensuring that we get lots of passes of that satellite over the field in a week uh, to ensure that, we, uh, that we're having the best chance to get a clean image uh, with no cloud cover. Yeah, no, definitely. That's great, Luke. And, and I guess what do you do with the biomass images that you, that we provide? I guess, you know, it can help you pinpoint points in the field which perhaps need, perhaps need a bit of extra investigation or where something has gone wrong. Um, you talked a bit about VRA uh, in your presentation. What kind of technology would a farmer need to kind of get started with VRA application? Um, yeah, well, um, uh, a lot of farms, a majority of farms in the UK will have the technology to do this. Maybe not, maybe it hasn't been utilised by, by everyone. Uh, but, but firstly, you need a, a sprayer that is, is capable of applying uh, crop protection products variably. And that needs to be linked to a terminal that can actually read that variable, that variable application map and, uh, and apply variably off that map. Uh, that capability on that terminal needs to be turned on as well. So if it's, uh, so you may require an additional license to turn that on on your terminal. Uh, but as long as you have then things to a sprayer that can spray in a terminal that can read the map, uh, you should be able to do it. But you can test, uh, you can test your machinery to make sure that it can actually do it by using the, the Zavio terminal check page or website. So if you go to the Zavio website, or you can access it through the Field Manager platform. Uh, you can you can download a test application map uh, before you uh, before you then generate a variable application map in Field Manager. Sounds good. Thank you, Luke. And uh, I'm always surprised actually how many sprayers actually do have the capabilities to variably apply. Um, you don't necessarily need the brightest, newest, shiniest bit of kit. Um, you know. Actually, a lot of machines that we have in the UK are already have the functionality. It just needs to, to be activated and, and looked at. And that's obviously something we've quite enjoyed doing over the last couple of years um, in our on-farm development community, uh, where we've been testing some of that functionality. And perhaps we'll come on to that a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Um, another question uh, I can see is around... Um, how Zavio works from the perspective of, you know, is it just for BASF products, BASF innovation, or, you know, does it work with, you know, all innovation that's that's on the market in the UK? Um, what are your yeah, thoughts well, yeah, well, uh, you can use Zavio Field Manager with, with uh, all, all products, all registered products on the market. So if you're entering your, uh, your activities, your, your tasks into Field Manager, 
All of the registered products in the market will be in the list of products that you can choose from uh, to add to that task. Uh, so no, it's not just uh, BSF products, uh, but you can use it uh, for whichever products that you, you're using on your fields. Great, and I guess I've asked you a few questions, maybe one for me to, to take myself. Um, in the in the slides there, you talked about thirty pounds per hectare um, as being um, the the margin over input cost um, that you get back from using um, some of the technology and, and the trials that we've done across Europe. Um, you know, do we have UK data so, to support this? And I guess the answer definitely is is yes. You know, about twenty five of those trials that we have within there are, are UK. Um, UK specific uh, data points. I mentioned that on-farm development community that we have where we've done uh, lots of testing. I'm sure some of the on-farm development community are perhaps watching, watching the, the feed now. Um, and it's great to be able to um, do split field trials, looking at how variable rate application um, works alongside um, you know, a flat rate and, and see that benefit. Um, just checking on my on my WhatsApp here with with some of the questions that are coming in, um, I can see one here around: um, Can you now toggle all products to be vary applied? Some products were locked to flat rate this year. Um, Luke, perhaps that that's one for you to comment on. Yes, so I believe that uh, in this coming season there will be greater flexibility around uh, which products can be variable rate applied. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I think we are bringing in additional products to be able to do that and widening that functionality. Uh, one from Simon: uh, Can you create multiple field variable map, uh, variable application maps? Um, so where you, I guess, you're doing a couple of fields at once. How, how does that work within Field Manager? Yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> So across a lot of the across the system, when you're doing uh, any kind of tasks, such as adding a crop or adding an application task, whether it be a, a flat rate application task or a variable rate application task, you can do that in a in a batch. So you can stack the fields that you want to do it for. So you can add additional fields to that page, uh, which you saw me demonstrate, and and you can plan that task if it's the same task or the same crop if you're adding a crop uh, for multiple fields at once. Perfect. And then, and then just looking and, and perhaps pulling some of the questions here together, there's a couple of questions around the, the field analytics tab that we have within Field Manager. We've obviously got our biomass images coming in there. Um, what kind of other maps can people um, people input? You know, soil connect, soil conductivity, an example. Um, you know, what, what other kind of maps can people push in there and how can they compare and contrast with with the data that's provided by Xavier? Yeah, I, I think as long as it's uh, compatible in terms of the file type, we can upload a whole, a whole range of different map types. Uh, so for example, uploading your yield map for the previous season for that field, uploading your seeding map after you've drilled the crop, your seeding map from your drill, uploading uh, your application map from your, uh, from your sprayer, for example, after you've completed an application. So then you can you can upload all these maps and store them all under your field within the analytics and start comparing your maps side by side or comparing them to the biomass maps provided as well. And you can also use the analytics function to add addition to add uh, management zones across uh, these different maps to further analyze what's going on and try and you know glean as much information from them as you can. Great, thank you, Luke. A, a nice question from from Philip. Um, can I track where I am in the field from my smartphone in relation to a biomass area? Uh, perhaps this is a nice one for us to touch on for a little bit. For me, I think one of my key things that I like about about Xavier Field Manager is that you've got uh, the web browser version and you've also got the phone app version, and both connect up into the cloud. Both are taking your live information and 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 giving it to you wherever you are. Um, so Philip, definitely yes. You know, if, if you're using the, the the field manager smartphone app, um, it will give you a uh, the, the the geolocation of where you are on top of your your kind of biomass layer, so you can go and check some of those challenges um, that, that might be identified from from the biomass image. Yeah. Um, 
Anything to add, Luke? Sorry, I was just going to say, yeah, in, in addition to that, you know, on your app, it can understand your location, that GPS location. And through that, you can really utilize the field notes functionality, uh, which is where against one of your fields uh, on your app or on the web-based version, you can then leave a field note. So as you're walking your crop, for example, you may see an area of high disease, uh, a high weed pressure. You may start to see some black grass coming through in a corner of the field, for example. So you want to make a note of that in your against that field with the location. So you press field notes on that field on your app and you can write a, a comment and you can also take a picture with your phone in the field, which will then save against uh, that field note as well. So then that note is saved against that field and you can follow up with that at a, a later date as a reminder of something that needs your attention. Great. Mm. No, thank you, Luke. Um, Agreed that field notes is something that's quite new into field manager and it's yeah. something I quite like as well. A um, couple of questions um, in terms of data ownership. Um, and I guess this is, is probably a good one um, to cover. Um, of course, all digital products, data ownership and data privacy is, is important. And as Luke showed in the live demo, there are some terms and conditions that you need to sign up to as uh, as a user of Xavier Field Manager, um, and and you know the the I would encourage you to do that and have a have a good read through there. Um, I guess in short, um, the data is is yours. It's the farmers, the farms' data. Um, of course, you need to put that into Field Manager uh, to get the insights um, around modelling. Um, you know, around, you know, various different topics, um, the, mm. the zone spray, et cetera, to, to, to really get the most from Field Manager. So, um, of course, you do need to share that data with Field Manager to get the insights to support you with your farm activities. Um, but, you know, if, if you were to decide to leave um, Zavio in, in future years, you know, you'd be able to, to do that and, 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 and take the data with you. Um, I guess the other thing that's perhaps worth mentioning is obviously as a global tool with um, you know a large number of users around the world and, and over a thousand already giving field manager a go in the in the UK. Um, you know that's one of the benefits of of improving our modelling, improving our technology is is um, an anonymously um, using some of the observations you're making, etc., to to home in on our on our models to make them better and more useful. Um, you know, in future years and future seasons. Um, so that perhaps covers that one off. Um, maybe an opportunity then perhaps to move on to, to the pricing. I can see a couple of questions in, in the chat in terms of how much does Xavier Field Manager cost? Um, I don't know, Luke, if that's one you want to cover. Yeah, no, uh, I'll, I'll cover this. Thanks, Louis. Uh, so the, the cost of Field Manager for the 2021 season is uh, available to see on the on the website. So just go to zavio.com and then hit the pricing tab and you'll be able to see it. But I'll give you a quick overview. Uh, so the functionalities within Field Manager are split up into three different packages. And uh, then packages are called the basic package, uh, which is free. Uh, the pro package, which costs £200 per farm per year and uh, the premium package, which costs 500 pounds per farm per year. Uh, so just to give you an overview of what's included in each package, the, the basic package, so the free one, allows you to create your farm, add your fields, add your cropping, you know, uh, to see the weather data coming in for your, for your farm uh, and your fields, uh, to upload your tasks and documentation for that field. Uh, the pro package starts, uh, the pro package, which is the one that costs £200 per farm per year, brings in the, the biomass maps from the satellite imagery and also the functionality around uh, fertil uh, fertilisation and uh, seeding, so the variable rate application maps and the timing alerts. Uh, the premium package, which costs £500 per farm per year, then brings in the functionality around the crop protection tasks and applications, uh, so the ability to create a variable rate application task uh, for crop protection, so fungicide and PGR, and also the the alerts for the optimal timing of the application based on the the, the crop data modelling. Uh, so that comes under the premium package. 
what is uh, what's uh, really nice though is under the basic package, which is free, uh, on two of your fields you can you can experience and test the premium functionality for free. So on two of your fields you can get a nice taster and an, an idea of, of what the uh, of what premium functionality is for free. Great, no, thank you, Luke. And, and I guess perhaps if we talk a little bit about setting up a farm and, and getting started with Field Manager, I thought you showed quite nicely in the demo. It's, it's a pretty simple process and, and quite easy to, to do. Um, I guess, I guess a, a couple of questions. Um, shapefiles, perhaps for some people on the call, they, they might not have heard of shapefiles before. You know, what are they? How easy are they to get hold of? Um, and then, you know, for an average size farm, how long do you think it would, would take to get, you know, all the fields in there and, and be completely set up? Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks, Louis. And uh, now I've touched upon shape files, but I understand that, you know, uh, it may not be a familiar terminology for, for everyone. Uh, now shape files are, are simple files, really, which hold the information about your field, field and your field boundaries. And you can tell it's a shape file by looking at the kind of the file extension. So the bit that comes after the file name. Uh, so it will end in either a, a .shp file, a .shp file uh, you need to upload that field. And that contains the field boundaries. Uh, you could also have a, a .dbf file, which contains uh, kind of attributes for the field. So kind of like your field names as well. So you can bring them in automatically. And also you've got a... a a .prg file, which is the third type of, of file, which is an optional file, which contains projections. Uh, and shape files can be attained and found and exported from, from uh, other systems. So uh, farm management systems, for example, such as Gatekeeper and Muddy Boots, you'd be able to export, export shape files from there. And you can also export shape files from other dig digital systems in the market and also uh, machinery platforms. Uh, also relevant to, to mention here, uh, <clears throat> I think I've showed you it on the, yeah, I would have showed you on the demo. Uh, we have a, a Zavia Field Manager has a, a wireless data link with my John Deere. So if you're a John Deere user, you can, uh, you can connect your Zavia Field Manager account to your John Deere platform, and you can then exp uh, bring in them shape files wirelessly, and they'll be very quickly into Zavia Field Manager. With the My John Deere link as well, you can also send your application maps either way. So if you've created a variable application map, you can send it to your John Deere sprayer through the My John Deere uh, very easily. <clears throat> and you, there's one final part of that question, wasn't there, Louis? Yeah, about uh, you know how how easy it is. I think you saw in the demo just how simple it can be to add to add far, to add fields to your farm and how quickly you can do that. Now with with shape files, you can quite easily add add all of your fields to your farm uh, really quickly. Uh, and even if you don't have it, you saw the, the feature there that I showed you where you can use the, the automatic field boundary detection within Field Manager to start adding uh, all of your fields really quickly and, and naming them. And then if you want to take the time to go through them one by one to make sure, sure they're perfect, you, you can do. Um, Sounds good. And, and yeah. a quick one just from, from Tom. Is there a field limit? Is there a maximum number of fields you can have in your farm? Uh, I think I think there is, but it's extremely high. I think it's up in the up in the hundreds. I don't think uh, many farmers in the UK are gonna are gonna hit it. Uh, and I suppose if anyone does manage to to reach that uh, that magic number, if you just uh, drop our, our customer support line a call and let them know, I'm sure we can um, knock that up for you but uh, yeah, yeah it's i think it's pretty high that you don't have to worry about that yeah so it's it's, it's one um licensed per farm like you say and um yeah shouldn't shouldn't hit any uh, any ceilings there uh, locally um exactly one point i went just thinking of time luke it's obviously racing on and there's probably a couple of other topics that would be good to address just quickly i think it's probably worth mentioning the customer support team that, that we have at zavio at this point um you know there's a if you go onto the web page and, and click the support tab there's there's a phone number and an email address there so if you do have any trouble or have any questions about setting up your farm you know do just um drop those guys a line really friendly and and can give you um give you all the support you need um 
what topic did I want to come to next? I thought it'd be worth talking a little bit about modeling. Um, for me, I think modeling is one of the really exciting features of, of, of field manager and something that's quite new to the UK. Um, do you want to talk again a little bit about how the modeling works, what data you need and, and how it can support you as, as an agronomist or as a farmer? Yeah, no, uh, no problem, Louis. Uh, so, uh, so during the demo, I showed to you that the different uh, kind of insights that you can gain from the modeling. So there was the growth stage uh, tracking and, and forecasting for that crop and, and also the disease uh, risk, the disease and pest risk alerts. And these models are driven by the information that you put into your field when you first set it up. So information like what crop it is, the variety, the drilling date, uh, previous cropping, <clears throat> and, and really importantly, the, the weather data uh, that sits within Field Manager. Uh, and and uh, so what does it mean? Uh, what does it mean, for example, when Field Manager says that uh, the field is a high risk of disease? Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that the field has disease uh, that is infected, but it means that there's a, a high uh, risk a high likelihood of, of susceptibility of disease on that field uh, and that's according to that to that modeling uh, and also just to say uh, sorry Lou, what was the next question <laughs> i've just uh, lost track of my thoughts that's okay i'll, I'll perhaps pick up it i think uh, <laughs> like you say there's there's a lot there isn't there i, I think one of the things um yeah for me is is kind of the the way that it can support you as on the farm you know either either in your role as an agronomist or as a farmer and I think uh, having worked with this tool now for a couple of years I think one of the really um, exciting things from an agronomist perspective is utilizing that cross-farm dashboard looking at a busy time of the year at all of the different fields that um, you know you're looking after and you know being able to see which which crops are likely to be furthest forward which ones are likely to have the highest uh septoria triticide risk or yellow rust risk um and therefore being able to 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 direct yourself i guess a little bit more in terms of where you need to go you obviously can't be everywhere at once as much as we'd all like to be sometimes um and then i guess from a farmer's perspective it's all around the application isn't it and trying to get a you know your expensive fungicide applied at exactly the right time um and it's where it's going to do the most good um can also really be supported i guess by this modeling so for me i think this is a feature that can really support um both um a couple of more questions are coming in um and i think it's really good there's 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 loads of questions around um new ideas and, and, and new features. Um, you know, I can see one here from Philip. Are you planning to add T-SUM aphid alerts for autumn cereals? Um, Philip, I think we'd love to. Uh, it's, it's not something that's in there yet. Um, but one of the nice things about uh, digital is it's always developing and growing and, and, and improving. And, and certainly that's an idea that we'll, we'll be taking back to, to the developers to see if we can, we can put that one in there. Um, there's one from from Tristan um, around, um, you know, if you're looking at um, very very dose on um, more than a field basis. So if you're looking at varying a dose, uh, doing a variable dose on three or four fields, um, how do you work out the the maths there around exactly how much product etc that you need? Again, at the minute, that is just on a per field basis, Tristan, but I think it's a really nice suggestion and one um, one that we'd be working on going forwards. Um, so yeah, so I think that's one of the one of the beauties of this kind of technology. you know it kind of develops with us and and you know user feedback is is something that's really really important to us. Um, and yeah, I know we do a survey every year, Luke, don't we? In terms of yeah. gauging how different uh, different things are working and and where we where we can um, yeah look to optimize Zafia going forward. Yeah, and I think that that feedback that we do collect after every season is really important. You know, hearing from the the users themselves, the growers, the, the agronomists using it. You know, what would they like to see in the system? How could they? How could we make it better for them? And we really do listen to that feedback. That 
then goes into the kind of the, the plan of, of of how we need to develop Field Manager for the future. And, and hopefully those who have been involved and using Field Manager uh, for a bit longer would have seen that maybe some of them ideas have come into the system already. No, exactly. Definitely. Um, any any new features, Luke, coming in for, for next year? Um, spring yes. barley is a crop. Yeah, no, ex exactly. And I'm uh, really excited to say that uh, spring we're, we're adding spring barley into the cropping, uh, into the options for the crops that you can you can add on your field, uh, on your farm. And and also with that, uh, you'll be able to receive the, the, the crop data modelling for the spring barley. So the growth stage tracking and forecasting and also the disease risk alerts for spring barley. So that's really exciting. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, of... of of the users that uh, used it last season, uh, you'll be able to see that we've also added in a whole range of different cropping in there to really complement everything that you're doing uh, on your arable farm uh, and be able to put all of your different crops in the system, or as many as possible. Great, no thanks Luke. I guess we're coming towards the end of our hour now and I'm, I'm mindful, I don't want to take too much of, of people's time. Um, perhaps a, a couple of final points from me. Um, you are able to to get basis in the Rosso points from from using Field Manager. Um, there are points available for for both of those schemes by being a a, a user of Field Manager. Um, so that's a, a nice one just to mention. Um, I guess it's also nice to mention that um, this is the first of a, a number of webinars that we're hoping to do over the next couple of months. Um, so do look out for uh, for the next session. Um, which I think will be towards the end of February, um, where we'll cover some of this functionality, I guess, in a little bit more detail and, 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 and zoom in a little bit on, on some of it. Um, but yeah, thank you all very much for joining. Um, it's been great to have you all with us. Um, and yeah, we wish you a very nice yeah, rest uh, of your afternoon and evening. So, yeah, and thank, thank you, everyone. And just to add, uh, if you want to find out a bit more about, if you want to find out anything else about Zavia Field Manager, of course, we are on the, on the virtual farm. So if you go to zone 11 on a virtual farm, you'll be able to find out more about Zavio, look at Zavio Field Manager in more detail uh, and look at the other products Zavio Scouting. Great, Noah, thanks, thanks everyone. And uh, thanks for your time. Have a good evening. Thanks, Louis.